Notion charts can be a really powerful addition to your Notion workspaces, but from speaking with Landmark customers, I've noticed that a lot of users are actually missing out on a lot of the features that make charts really powerful. So in this video, I just wanted to share seven best practices or tips that I found most helpful in working with charts in Notion. Some of them have to do with how you think about and structure your database, while others are more to do with working with the Notion charts visualizations themselves. But I just wanted to share my seven best tips and hopefully that will help you start getting more out of Notion charts in your own workspaces. Let's take a look. So to illustrate these seven tips, I'm going to be working with this financials dashboard, which gives me some breakdowns of revenue, expenses, profit loss. But for our purposes, all of these views, which are shown in both revenue expenses and profit loss are being pulled from one single database. And this brings me to tip number one, which is for many use cases, you want to probably try and use one database rather than multiple databases when working with charts. And the main reason for this, or the main mistake that I see people making with charts is that it's very difficult to combine data from two different databases and then plot it into a single chart. Notion hasn't quite figured out a way to make that easy for us yet. And so the solution is more often than not, you probably can actually include all the data that you need for your chart visualizations into one single database. So a quick example of what that means exactly. For financials, it's actually a really clear case. So you could imagine having three databases in this. We could have a revenue database. We could have another database for all our expenses. And we could have another database which is trying to combine and relate the properties from these two databases to give us profit loss. Now that already is more complicated than having one database, but it's probably the most direct approach. And I've seen people try to set it up this way. The main issue that we're going to run into with that approach is you're not going to be able to create this profit loss balance as well as take advantage of any of the comparative calculations between positive and negative items. So the way to do this is you just have one database, in this case, financials. You might call this transaction since every item is a transaction. And instead of creating separate databases, all you need to do is add a type property. So in our case, we have a type for revenue and expense. And in this particular case, I've also added this formula here, which is going to convert these expense items into a negative value. In this case, I have a formula, which is as well as calculating the coin rate. It just has this condition where if the type is an expense, then we're just going to multiply it by negative one, which is going to give us a negative value. And because all of these are items in the same database, when I create my chart with profit loss, I can actually just make use of Notion's inbuilt sum feature. So when I click, what do I want to show on the Y axis? I just select the total sum and that's going to combine both the positive and negative values to give me this profit loss. So February, we have a profit loss of 12 K in February expenses were roughly 11 K and prof uh, revenue was approximately 25 K. And this gives us the calculation here by taking all the items, all the positive and negative line items in my database and mapping it into this nice profit loss visualization. So tip number one is wherever possible, when working with charts, you want to try and combine your data into one single database and just make use of these type or category tags, which you can then filter out in your charts later. So I didn't mention that the way to convert this database into these filtered revenue and expense items, all I need to do is just plot my chart as usual and then click into and create a filter for the type of revenue or the type of item. And I just need to make sure that only the revenue items are showing in this chart and only the expense items are showing in this chart. 
And this is how we get all of these different charts and views pulling from the exact same database. Tip number two, when you're working with ocean charts, chances are you want to include a date property by default. Now, the main reason for this is that most of the charts that you will be creating probably have some time or date component to them. You want to be tracking revenue across time, so month by month, January, February, or day by day. You want to be tracking your traffic stats, or you want to be tracking your project and task progress across time. And for that, you're going to need some sort of date property to create these time series visualizations. But I want to be very clear, part of tip two is to make full use of Notion's native date property. So you don't want to be creating a text property and including your date information in there. You don't want to be including your date information in the name or title property of your database. So I've seen people using you know, January 5th entry and then having their information in properties across from that date. Now you want to be making sure that you use Notion's native date property because that's going to give us all sorts of functionality in how Notion has built Notion charts. So for example, in this X axis here, I have a cumulative or a summary of all of the items that belong to a given month. And this is a native feature that's only available if I'm using a date property. So you can see when I show in the x-axis a date property, I have these options for relative date values, day, week, month, year, and that's just Notion doing the work for me of summarizing information based on a date. The same filters, it's really useful to have Notion's date property for things like filtering transactions based on <clears throat> relative dates, so this year, last month, last seven days, and that's really only possible if Notion knows to interpret this information as an actual date and not just some text. So quickly, just to show this, if I change this property, even though the information is exactly the same, if I change the property to a text type, you can see that a lot changes about how Notion interprets this data. It's really not very friendly. It's not gonna let me combine things nicely. And so tip number two is to First of all, make sure you probably include a date property in any chart database. And second of all, to make sure you're using Notion's native date feature property. Quickly, addition to that tip, Notion's charts don't automatically include a date property. So you might want to save yourself some time uh, and just create a button which has a chart with some dates pre-configured. So just create a new button, new chart, and I'm going to add a chart here. What we want to do is when this button is clicked, we're going to insert some blocks. So let me just quickly show you what an existing new chart looks like in Notion. If I click new chart and I look into this database, the only properties it's going to include are name and status, which is not really going to be that helpful for most use cases. So maybe we could call this a new time series chart. And what we could do is we could add a date property here. We could have September item. So we could just sort that with 12 months of data. We have our items here, add the dummy values, and then show those values in our chart. And now we just need to drag this chart into our new chart block button, done. So now that's just gonna save us some time when we want to configure a new chart. We can just hit this new time series chart and it's gonna give us this database that already has our dates and a values property, which we can obviously change based on what it is that we're measuring in this chart. You know, it could be the sum, it could be traffic, it could be whatever it is that you happen to be measuring for this particular chart. Okay, tip number three is going to be using the right chart type for the right type of data. 
Now, there's no hard and fast rule for this, but I just wanted to give some advice based on what I've been seeing. In general, when we have a date property, as mentioned, for time series charts like this, using a bar chart or a line chart is going to be the best use case or the best type of chart. When you don't have a time property, but you want to break something down into various categories, then using the donut chart is probably going to be the best layout and type. And just personally, one thing that I found useful is for the horizontal bar chart, using that for things like progress percentages, uh, again, where there's no time component involved, but you want to be tracking multiple things in a list but you want to get a sense of how far each has progressed. So that's just a quick tip for the different types of charts. You want to be using the donut or pie chart for things like breaking down something that adds up to a whole total into its various categories or types. You want to be using a line chart or a vertical bar chart for time series data. And you might want to consider using a horizontal chart for Again, things without a date property, but where you want to be tracking something like progress or the count of various items or projects, which might have a longer list of items to track. So, tip number four, duplicate your views. Now, the first piece of this is to understand that these chart views are not the databases themselves. So the database for this financials, the actual database, not even this view, this is a linked view of the source database, which I store on this databases map here. Any, any template that I create, I always have a separate place where the actual source database is being stored. And that gives me freedom to duplicate and copy and work with as many views as I like of a given chart or visualization. So what I mean duplicate is right click on a given view, a chart view, Click this duplicate button, rename it for the um, property that you want to be showing. And then after you have duplicated, you can just quickly change a single variable to give yourself multiple visualizations with the same data set. So for example, if I didn't want to just know the sum values, but I wanted to know, for example, the average for my revenue items, I could just quickly switch out this property here. I wouldn't need to reconfigure everything. I don't need to build a new chart from scratch. I don't need to filter and sort. I already have all the information that I want uh, configured. I just wanted to flip out the sum with the average property. Then duplicating views as many times as you want is a really, really helpful time-saving tip that I don't think enough people are really using. This actually brings me to tip number five, which is to make full use of filters when you're working with charts. So combining tip four and five, whenever you want to create a new view, duplicate that view quickly and then filter it out. So if, for example, I wanted to find out if I wanted to have a chart which was just showing a certain type of revenue, I would duplicate this view. I would say revenue. Let's just pick a category. I don't know, let's go revenue based on our product this year. I already have all the other parts configured. Uh, it's the exact same chart, except all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add an additional filter. So I'm gonna add a filter for the category, and I'm just going to show items that have the product tag. And there's one more thing I can change because this chart was already grouping by products. I'm gonna edit the view, I'm going to remove this grouping and this is just going to show me the revenue that has come in from any payments that are related to the product payments. Again, duplicate this. I could have another chart for a different category. So let's say instead of products, we wanted to get, we could do the services and projects revenue. Rename this to be services. And you can see how by using filters and different views, you could quickly turn a single database into 
tens or maybe even a hundred different charts and visualizations showing you exactly the information that you would like to see. So some things that you might want to consider for filters using dates. So you could use the relative date functionality to show you a filtered data set of certain revenue in this category over a given month, given week, given year. That's going to give you uh, a nice filtered view based on the data that you want to work with. You could also use something like a category property for filtering. You might filter by size. So another type of filter that you could create is let's just use the total here and let's go anything that is greater than a thousand. So that's going to filter out any payments that are below a thousand. We could do 2000. We could do 5,000 to get the large payments. And again, so another property type that you might want to consider filtering for is the value or size of a given item. And lastly, you can also filter by status. So you could, let's just keep this quite low. We could add yet another filter, which is going to show only the payments that are in progress or that have been paid already or that are still paid in the future. Tip number six is not really a tip about charts, but more about a best practice for how you build your systems in Notion when you're working with charts. Tip number six is to make it easy for yourself to add data so that your charts can stay up to date as easily as possible. So the furthest end of this spectrum would be to integrate something like a make automation that automatically syncs your data from an external source something like Google Analytics linked into your traffic's database that could have a daily updating automation that feeds in fresh data every single day. That's kind of the extreme end. The lower end of this spectrum would be to just simply make it easier for yourself to add new items into the respective categories or properties. So simple version of this is just if you have a filtered database like this revenue database, I have I have one filter in place, which is revenue item, which just means whenever I add a new item, it's automatically going to be assigned as a revenue item in my database. The same goes for grouping by dates. So this database view is a table that is grouped by due date. You can see that this table is grouped by various months. So for me, if I want to add a new revenue item to March, I just click into the respective area of the database new March revenue. It's going to automatically have a revenue type assigned to it, and it's going to be given a March due date automatically. So that's just another tip is just to take one step further and think about what are the easiest ways for me to add new data to my charts database so that it can stay up to date and I don't lose track or I don't have to go back and update it later. Another thing that I've included in Business OS is some of these shortcut buttons. So you might want to try something like this for yourself. For example, we have a new revenue button, which is very simple. You just click that. It's going to create a new item that's tagged with today's date. You can add that from anywhere and it's going to automatically be put into the uh, financials database with the appropriate tags in place. So to set up a button like that, you can see how this one is configured. When the button is clicked, we're going to add a page to the financials database as a new page. We give it the name, new revenue item, give it a type revenue. We can set it due as today. The status is not started. And then the last piece is after that page is added, we're going to open the page that was just added, new page added in center peak. And this little button, having that available around your workspace is a really nice way to just make sure it's as frictionless as possible to keep your charts databases up to date. And tip number seven is more of a stylistic one. Maybe this is just personal preference, but we can see here that we have a revenue in green. We have expenses in red and we have our profit loss also in green, but maybe I would want to use a different color. Personally, I think that for visual clarity, just using one color in Notion charts is a bit more uh, palatable than using their default colorful options. When we have this data 
Um, it is telling us information about the various categories, which might be useful, but I find it just gets a bit overwhelming and messy. So personally, my tip is to pick a color and then you can signal with that color either what this chart is all about. So green for positive revenue, red for expenses. Um, and the other stylistic options that I like to mention is you can probably remove a lot of these things for most charts. And if you made it all the way through to the end, there's one little bonus tip, which you may not have come across, which is you can actually save and export as a nice little PNG. Uh, Notion's given you some of these preset backgrounds, download it as a PNG, or you can copy it and then paste it in your workspace. You'll see a little preview of what this looks like here. It's just this nicely formatted, shareable, made with Notion chart. That's just a little uh, bonus if you hadn't come across that feature in Notion. So lots of information covered there. Hopefully you found one or more of those tips useful and it'll help you build better charts. A very broad recap of all the tips that we covered are to try and use one database with lots of categories, filters, different visualizations for the same data. I found that the best way to use Notion charts is to add as much information into one database as possible, then create many views, many filters, and many different visualizations of the same data. That's probably how you're going to get the most out of this Notion charts feature. If you do want to use this financials and all of the other workspaces that were previewed in this video, please do head over to landmarklabs.co. We have a massive library of Notion business templates, and this particular template is our flagship all-in-one hub called Business OS. If you're interested, please do check that out. Thanks for watching.